Hi, I'm Jessica, and when I'm not drinking all the coffee, watching Razorback sports, or hanging out with my family of boys, it's my passion to help elementary music teachers just like you find your unique teaching style. My goal with this podcast is to share helpful tips, strategies, and to give you the motivation you need to gain momentum in your teaching so you can continue being the music teacher rock star you already are. Well, hello again. Today, we are going to start talking about tips for simplifying lesson planning. Today is part one, and then next week's podcast episode will be part two. So, I want to start out by saying, I feel like when you're lesson planning, I'm I'm talking to any teacher, right, that a lot of times you just want to have it perfect, you want to have all the things included, and you want to use every resource available to you. And so a lot of times you can get bogged down by being, trying to be perfectionist and by trying to do all the things, I'm using air quotes, you can't see me, but, but the thing is, is simplifying it actually makes your job easier and makes your teaching go further. And we're going to talk about that today in today's episode. The first thing I want to talk about when we're talking about simplifying lesson planning is there are so many resources available to you. So to recap my experience, I walked into a classroom that did not have a music teacher for seven years. So I did not have a lot of resources available to me. But here's what I did. I had old textbooks And I thought I was maybe the only teacher that did this, but talking to a lot of other teachers who don't have, you know, modern curriculum, and I'm not going to name a bunch of, you know, the curriculums here, but um, a lot of times the only thing you have at your disposal maybe is old textbooks. On top of that, use the internet, right? There are so many free even lesson plans available nowadays. Um, where you can just even type in a category and see all the stuff that comes up. And that's what I did when I was first starting out. But what do you do? I mean, that's that gets overwhelming, right? You can't just print out like 50 lesson plans about Melody and then have them sitting on your desk and like, well, how in the world am I supposed to, <laughs> how am I supposed to go through this? Well, first of all, don't do 50 lesson plans about Melody. Go through, look at your objectives you're teaching, go through each objective and say, I need to find lesson plans about tempo, dynamics, melody, rounds, whatever else there is that you need to teach. Then look at the resources you already have available. We're just going to talk about the textbooks right now. We're going to talk about the other ones in a minute. But look at the textbooks you have in your classroom. Maybe they're even 10 years old, and that's okay. So as you notice in the index of those textbooks, In the teacher um, book, a lot of times it'll tell you not only what the song is or what the lesson is, but what objectives it's teaching. So you look at that particular lesson and you're thinking, "Um, no, this isn't going to work. Or, yes, this would be perfect to teach this. I love this song and I think my kids would get a lot out of it. So go on your computer or use uh, even a notebook and a pen and jot down what song you found, what page number it is, and then boom, you have something right there to teach that standard. So after you've done that, you've gone through the book, and then you've gone through any other resources you have available to you, then you start looking online for resources, okay? Um, And I want to also mention that in the Elementary Music Teacher Academy, which I'm going to leave in the show notes, I'm adding new lessons and lesson plans in there every single month that covers different objectives for your students. But on top of that, there are free resources online. And so if you found the resources and you printed some out, what I did is get some notebooks, I'm sorry, some three ring binders, just like, you know, the kids buy for school and get some labels and then some dividers, some dividers to put into your, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, the, the, the manila dividers you can put in there, you know, so you're dividing things in there by sections. So for instance, One of your notebooks might be, I keep calling it a notebook, good grief, y'all. One of your binders might be, um, we're just going to talk about what you already talked about. One of them might be just about tempo, and then the other manila uh, binder divider will be dynamics. And so what you're doing is any lesson plan you find, you've three, three ring, 
three hole punched it and you're putting it in there behind that divider if that makes sense and you could put the lower elementary in the front of it and then the upper elementary behind it so you're easily able to pull that lesson out when you are working on that standard and then you'll eventually maybe have five or six binders full of lessons available to you now we're talking about simplifying lesson planning. I know you're like, okay, none of that sounds simple and it sounds overwhelming and you just told me to do 100,000 things. Now, if you've listened to me any amount of time, you know I am a huge exaggerator and I like to throw in big numbers. So no, I didn't say 100,000 things, but it may seem that way. But what I'm trying to get at is sometimes you have to put in some work at the beginning and then you'll notice as the years go on as you're teaching it gets simpler because you've done the hard work at the beginning. Now, as you're in the middle of the school year, well, m not not really the middle right now. But if you're listening to this, to, it's October. So it's like still towards the beginning of the school year. But take one of your breaks or a, a day you have off from school. And this this will not take longer than, you know, a few days to go through with a fine tooth comb the curriculum you already have available, the, any of the old textbooks you have available to you, and then to find just a few filler lessons online to print out, okay? None of that will take longer than a day or t a day or two. And then so after you've done that, you have everything organized, then when you know you're wanting to teach a certain lesson, you're like, okay, let me look at my list I made here. You're organized it on somehow on a Google Google Doc or Excel spreadsheet or however you want to, and then you're able to quickly go, okay, um, in this curriculum, page 56, we're going to do this song because I really want my kids to focus on singing um, and singing in tune, and this will be perfect for that. Or it's a partner song, and that's exactly what I've been looking for. And so then you're not just, you know, so for hours and hours every week as you're lesson planning, you're not just searching through every single book you have trying to find lessons. They're already available. All you have to do is pull up the list you have. It's right there. You've already gone through all the stuff. You have the list right there. You pick a activity from that list you've already typed up and bam, it's simple. It's right there and it's quick and you can use it year after year. So we, I told you I was going to go into not just do you have curriculum or old textbooks is what I meant to say, in your classroom, you also probably have, if, if you're brand new, you probably do not. But if you've been teaching even for a couple years, or even if you're right out of college, you are already going to have probably some workshops you've attended. Um, so materials you've gotten from workshops, trainings, or any of the or for Kadai levels, what do you do with all that stuff? Okay, a lot of that will already come in a binder available to you, so you probably already know where I'm going with this. What I did is I took some little sticky notes and I labeled, just like I did the other binders I had avail I had created, is I, with the sticky notes, wrote on an activity. We were taught, um, you know, xylophone bordoon, or this one teaches, is a speech piece that teaches rhythm. Um, this is syncopation, and I would label all of the, the stuff I learned so I didn't have to spend hours just flipping back and forth, and then I was like, okay, this week, I've already pulled from those other notebooks. Okay, I did an activity from this textbook. This week, I want to focus on pulling a lesson I learned at this ORF workshop. Bam, it's right there. There's a, and then I flip to the part, to the page that I wanted, and there's that lesson. Okay, I hope this is making sense. So let's recap. You're going through, first of all, any old textbooks you have. Then you can do this first or last going looking online for any resources that you can use to put, to create binders with lessons. And then you look through any other resources you've gotten from other workshops that you probably just have all these notebooks just scattered around and you don't really know how to use them because there's so many things available. Um, and so then you go through and you label with sticky notes or even you can do, you know, take them out and rearrange it and to put, to put the lessons in order by subject matter. So after you've done that, now you have all this all this stuff to pull from. How do you know where to pull from? How do you know which activities to do each week without being overwhelmed? Because there is so much. So what I want to tell you is we're going to talk more about that next week. But don't be so overwhelmed with I need to get, get through all of the stuff because that's not true. Okay? 
So let's say you have your master list. You have about, mm, I don't know, we're just going to use the word melody because that seems to be what's on my brain today. But let's say you have 15 activities, or songs that you've pulled from different resources that we just talked about that are typed up with page numbers and what grade levels it could be used for. And then you get to the end of the school year and through those 15 activities, you've only gone through seven of them. That's okay. You're because here's the deal. If you've spent time going through all the curriculum and lessons available to you and you've made that list, you know no matter which activity you pull from that list, it's all going to be quality. It's all going to be lessons that your students are learning and they are getting something from it because you took the time to make sure it was a quality lesson. Okay? So then the following year, you could either do the other eight activities or you already have done those seven activities and you know you are comfortable teaching that. So it doesn't matter if you do the other eight, continue doing the other seven, or try to do ten. So what I'm saying is you have the master list. You pull from that list activities to do based on a certain objective. And then you teach it. You do not stress out about getting through every single song and every activity you've learned in a workshop and every resource you have available to you because you will not. You will not. And this is one, me um, personally, I'm very type A personality. Um, and so for me, I want everything to be organized and I want it. Okay, I got to get through all the things. I made my list. I didn't get through the list. And I'm a list maker, by the way, as well. Like I'm still one of those people that has pen and paper all the time and I jot down notes. Or there's like a hundred notes on my phone right now that I just, I'm always taking notes. And so it would bother me when I didn't get through all of these activities I had, spent all the time organizing it and really going through everything I had and making kind of my own little curriculum map to use in my classroom. Because let me remind you, I didn't have a teacher I followed. There was no one, I had to kind of create my own curriculum map for my class. And so I got to the point where I was like, why am I so stressed out? focusing on getting through all the activities instead of just focusing on teaching my students. Does that make sense? Don't get so bogged down with, I need to teach four activities this class period because if we don't get through it all, then I'm, I'm a failure. No, 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 no. Keep it simple. We're going to talk about next week keeping it simple and how to do that, okay? But what I want to tell you is don't get so focused on stressing out about getting through all of the stuff that you're not focused more on teaching the lessons quality. And you've heard me say this before, quality over quantity. Okay. That's huge quality over quantity. The last thing I want to say before we go, and like I said, part two will be next week is how do you, okay. So you've gone through all the things you've figured out what lessons to teach per objective, but how do you know what grade level to use with this? This was something that was huge to me also. Now, Usually hard for me, I, I should say. I want to tell you that it's okay to combine grade levels, okay? And then you're like, wait, what? I've been doing different lessons for kinder, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and maybe you teach sixth. Here's what I want to tell you. Repetition for kids it goes a long way. Think about in your own family, okay? Maybe you're a parent, maybe you're not. You've probably babysat or you've been around kids in not even a teaching capacity, but any type of child, and they ask you to read a story. Well, to adults, you're like, okay, I read that story, it's done, right? I have three little boys, and let me tell you, I have, I mean, I could check out new books from the library, but I'm telling you, they bring me the same books probably every single night I'll read, you know, I'm like, well, wait, we read that last night. They're like, I want to hear it again. And then what happens the next night? I want to hear it again. Well, the same thing goes in your classroom. You're like, I've already taught this song last year. So my second graders who are now third graders aren't going to want to do it again because they've already learned it. Kids love repetition. It doesn't matter if you do it once, twice, 10 times. They're still going to want to do a particular song over and over. You may have a whole lesson planned. And then you're not even planning to go back to a different song, but your kids are asking you, can we please do that song again? So you're like, you know what? I'm going to scratch this lesson and we're going to review that song because they want to do it. Now, here's the thing. So talking about combining lessons per grade level. Now, if you do a song with second grade and you do it again with third grade, but the third graders are already familiar with the song. So guess what? 
for them, it's going to be review. You're not even going to need to teach it as long. And also, as third graders, you're going to be able to do more with the song, right? Same thing with fourth and fifth. If you do the same activity with fourth and fifth grade, the fifth graders, it's going to be review and you're going to be able to extend the lesson, okay? I'm not going to talk about that in detail because I could talk about that forever. But it's okay to combine lessons per grade level. I always did. Kindergarten was first, second, and third, fourth, and fifth. But the lessons would look a little different for each grade level. Even though it was the same song, the third graders would be like, but we're also doing this, fifth graders, but they're also going to do this. So they could see the objectives were a little bit different per grade level, even if they were doing the same song or activity. So I want to tell you, it's okay to do that. It is okay to do the same song. Even if you have old textbooks and it says specifically, this is a second grade book, guess what? You don't have to just use those songs with second graders, okay? So I wanted to say that today. I wanted you to know that it's okay to simplify and it's okay to make your life easier. And I hope this helped you. And we're going to talk about more next week about how to simplify lessons so your students get the most benefit from coming to your music classroom. I hope you got something from this. And I am so grateful that you took the time out of your day to listen. And if you have any questions, like I said, please feel free to ask. And I will be back next week. Have a great week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, I would love for you to review the show and leave a rating on iTunes. To find out more about how I can help you gain momentum in your elementary music teaching career, head to thedomesticmusician.com where you'll find free downloads, courses, the blog, and so much more. Continue teaching music and never doubt the impact you're making each and every day in the lives of your students.